Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today, I'm not in my new small home studio, I'm in the garden, because I need a bit of space outside to shoot a wet picture. Well, it's not really gonna be wet. What we're gonna do is combine water from a hose pipe and a bit of flash to create portraits that have a remarkable, sparkly, bokeh background. Obviously, I have a few things to set up, but it is a lovely day for it. It's not supposed to last. Whilst I'm doing that, you should be clicking on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. So for now, let's get a light set. Let's get a model in. Let's turn the water on. Let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie is gonna be the model for this shoot, and as well as a great model, you need a couple of things to achieve this look. First of all, you're gonna need two flashes. I'll get the other one out in a second. Next, you're gonna need a dark background. Now you might be lucky, you might have a dark background, something in shadow behind you today, no such luck. So what I've done is I've nipped into my studio and I've got an old studio background, one that I don't mind if it gets a little bit wet, and I put it way back over there. Then you're gonna need some water. Now, when it comes to the water, that should be the very last thing you add to this setup because, well, you wanna get everything right first before things get wet. Speaking of getting wet, it's a good idea to cover your flashes. So I've got some very large, clear, or at least translucent bin liners that I'm gonna place over my flashes just to keep them nice and dry and make sure that uh, nothing bad happens. Before we get too far into this, let's have a quick think about the lens choice. So I'm gonna take a test photo in aperture priority mode just to see what we get, because there might be a bit of a problem. Here we go, Sophie, head and shoulders picture. And yeah, head and shoulders picture of Sophie, but that background appears to be way too small. I could get Sophie closer to the background, but then both the background and Sophie will get wet, or I can use compression. Now you may have heard of something called lens compression, which isn't technically accurate, but it is helpful because I'm actually gonna use a longer lens. The longer the lens I use, the more I zoom in, the more compression I get. And I get that not because of the lens, but because I have to go backwards to frame up the shot. So as I come back here, I actually get compression. And then I use the long lens, zoom in, get the crop I want. And when I do this, Sophie magically fits into this now huge background. Sophie hasn't moved, the background hasn't moved. All I've done is use distance to give me compression and my zoom lens to crop in. Next, we need to get that background as dark as possible. So if you were shooting at nighttime or the end of the day, this would be fairly straightforward. We're not, we're in the middle of the day, albeit an overcast day. So I'm gonna to have to do this by careful exposure. So first of all, if I go to my manual mode on my camera, I can dial in my flash sync speed, 250th of a second. I need to be wide open. There's no discussion on that. Wide open is where you have to be. F2.8 for me. And native ISO for me, 200 ISO. Let's take a test shot. No flash see what we get here we go Sophie and well that is overexposed not dark at all so this is a bit of a problem now I might be able to adjust the ISO and get a little bit of light back but in reality there's only one solution and it's high speed sync flash it's the easiest thing to set up right here and now so I'm going to turn on high speed sync flash that's going to allow me to shoot at say four thousandth of a second Let's try that and see how this looks, again, without the flash firing. Here we go, Sophie. And at 4,000th of a second, yes, I can see a little bit of Sophie. I'm not worried about that so much as the background, and that background looks nice and dark. So those are the settings I'm going to use for the rest of this shoot. So now all we need to do is to get the flash to match the camera. So I can't do this with a flash meter. Not many flash meters can do high speed sync metering. So I'm gonna to have to do this by eye. So let's start, I don't know, in the middle of the flash power range, about one eighth power and take a test shot. Okay, Sophie, here we go. And that looks a little bit underexposed. It's close, but I think a bit more power is required. So I'll increase my flash to a quarter power. That's one more stop of light. Here we go. And that looks much better. That looks nice and bright. That background remains nice and dark, but we've got some lovely lighting on Sophie. Yeah, this is looking really good. 
So this is my second light. It's another Flashpoint Explore 400, but this time I've got it in a long throw reflector, which means it should give me maximum light output, which considering we're at high speed sync and close to the maximum output of these flashes has to be a good thing. Again, I'm gonna cover this with a little waterproof bag to give it some protection. And then this light is going way back behind Sophie, close to the background back here. And I'm gonna point it towards Sophie's back. I'm trying to keep it just slightly lower than her shoulder line so it doesn't appear in the pictures. And I reckon about there is right. Let's just take a test shot, see how this looks. Okay, Sophie, here we go. Again, no idea what the correct power is, so I'm gonna start probably around about one eighth power. Here we go. And what I'm interested in is not necessarily the effect because we won't really see it until we add some water into the scene. What I'm really interested in is can I see the light behind Sophie? Because if I can, now's the time to move it. Everything is ready. The flashes are set. Everything is prepared. The water is turned on and Sam is on water duty. So let's take a few shots like this and see how they come out. Okay, everyone ready? Okay, here we go. point I realized something wasn't right with the backlight. Occasionally it would fire and then it wouldn't fire for a couple of shots and then randomly it would fire again and then nothing and then it would start all over again. I couldn't work out what was going on. I checked the battery. I changed the channel. Eventually I realized it's the transmitter. Working in a studio I normally have it on short range on location. I'd forgotten to change it to long range transmission. Once that was done Everything was fine, and off we go again. Well, that was a great fun shoot. And of course, now we're done, the sun is back out again. If you've got any questions or you've enjoyed this video, just leave me a comment below. That would be great. Click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And we have new videos coming out, well, pretty much every single day. And of course, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.